everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new watching for the first time, my name is Bruce of Abowski Studio. I want to thank you for joining us, and if you like what you see in this video, please subscribe, hit that bell notification icon. It'll let you know when I post new videos and such. Uh, so, pretty much the holidays were pretty nice, and it's kept me pretty busy, so I haven't been obviously posting any videos. I apologize for that. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, and for today's video, I'm going to be working on another uh, plain air uh, painting to finish up from last year and I've also improved my wall easel a bit. Let me show you that. Kind of changed out the uh, pegboard. Got some uh, chalk paint on there to have a nice matte finish. It, uh, I think it looks pretty nice and I think it will help out a little bit too with filming the white. To me it was a little distracting so I have not forgotten about the big painting I was working on. Uh, picture is going to be coming up in a moment. But uh, I do plan on continuing with that probably in the next couple weeks. Hopefully start uh, building another video centered around that for the next segment. So be looking for it and uh, let's continue with this one. Thanks for joining me. Okay, here's a look at the uh, colors I'll be using. I'll be listing them in the description box below so be sure to check that out. Okay, we're going to get started on this piece here. I have a little bit of a collection of some started uh, uh, pl plain air pieces that I started last year that I want to try to wrap up and get framed up to exhibit. So I've started with this piece that uh, needed some attention. And uh, if you've followed my channel at all with my plain air videos, typically I do not complete them all in one shot on location. I tend to uh, go about 80%. And uh, what I'm doing is reiterating the sky tone, sky color. And for the medium, I'm using a touch of linseed oil when needed and also uh, some cold wax uh, medium that I've played around with before and have done a video on. And it's pretty cool stuff to work with. I highly encourage you to try that. You can see when you mix that cold wax in there, a little detail of the texture that you get and uh, it just adds a stiffness to the paint that I really enjoy and it's going to dry to a matte surface which really aids uh, of course I use a matte varnish too when I'm done so I do not like a reflective surface when uh, I varnish my paintings. Now for this piece I'm just using a gray tone disposable palette to work on this piece. Uh, I do have a Masterson sealed palette that I use most of the time but that was just an example of what I use sometimes. Now here I am applying with that mixture of cold wax in there the texture to uh, reiterate the pavement in the piece and this just really adds to the grittiness of the subject matter being an urban painting and all and it's a really nice touch that uh, once you put it on there you'll see me in a moment uh, manipulate it to achieve even more uh, kind of a a unique effect and I'm doing that by using a brush to beat down some of the excessively high ridges and just to integrate some elements of the uh, more pronounced texture with other elements and it's a nice technique to use you can see up above there in the shadow side of the building that's the original coat of paint uh, from the original paint session and You'll see sometimes you might want to uh, uh, save some of that when you put on the more opaque layers when you come back to the studio. But uh, it depends on what your goals are for painting. And I'll be using this technique coming up on the uh, sunlit side of the building using the same idea. And again, it's creating some texture for the building. And later on in the video, continue watching because there's some. Uh, I took some drastic correction measures. And you probably are guessing what's going on right now with some draftsmanship issues but I can't believe number one that I didn't pick pick it up during the plain air session went last year and uh, I don't want to go too much into it now and reveal it but you let me know in the comments if you see it already and uh, as I was playing this back doing the editing is when I, I picked up on it and it's amazing how when we're painting as artists and working on pieces we get caught up in certain elements of the painting in this case I was really uh, getting excited about using cold wax and texture and and you know we got to really try to pay attention to all aspects of draftsmanship paint color and texture and all that stuff so something to learn 
So pretty pretty interesting later on when when uh, you see what happens. And again, you know, I want to take this opportunity to apologize for lack of posting uh, for I think it's been at least a month. And uh, the holidays just really tend to get piled up, and I'm sure that happens with a lot of people. But uh, just stick with me. Uh, I'll be doing some more. Uh, videos kind of uh, showing you my process for painting and and hope you uh, enjoy watching them. I know some people have commented uh, that really helps them in their painting uh, journey and I'm glad that that helps. Um, there's so much so much opportunity to uh, learn out here on YouTube and I'm glad to be a part of it and uh, throw in my hat in the ring so to speak. So I want to thank, take an opportunity to thank everybody for uh, continuing to watch my videos. And again, if you're new, I'm hoping you're liking what you see and uh, let me know what you think. One of the things I'm going to be working on this year for you guys is doing some plein air videos of uh, using casein paints. And I might even do some little maybe studio still life things. I've been inspired by watching James Gurney's channel. That guy's amazing. And, and I, I started out originally in using water media, switched to oils in 93. So seeing, I've never tried casein though. And so I think it's going to be interesting. I think my style of painting will lend itself well to doing some plain air work and potentially a couple studio pieces. But mostly I want to eventually do some plain air sketching, bring those back to the studio and enlarge them to some studio pieces. So be looking for that in the future. So you may have already noticed in uh, working over this plain air piece that one advantage of the way I work in plain air, doing about 80% on site, is I feel I'm pretty good about nailing the uh, average values of a given area. And it allows me, when I get back in the studio, to push, pull, make it lighter, darker, and have that mid-range to work with. And it's really conducive. Here, there you can see I'm softening the edge of that shadow a bit. But not too close to the edge of the building because the shadow, that's where the shadow is starting. It tends to be a little more severe in edge. And as that shadow edge drifts away, it will dissolve just a tad. So something to think about. You can see this sort of thing very easily if you were out in an area where you had a lot of trees and buildings. And when you look at objects that are close to the ground source where the shadow starts, the very hard edge, and say a tree is 50 feet away from that object and it's casting a shadow, you'll notice the dappled uh, shadow of the leaves on the pavement or grass or whatever will be a little softer edged. So there's an interplay of edges that's going on. And if you really pay attention to those in all aspects of uh, different elements, parts of the painting uh, of the scene that you're painting you'll notice and that'll help you'll notice all these edge control issues that you need to pay attention to and that will if you're looking for it like my painting tends to be pretty realistic still painterly but uh, that little bit of, of information is going to really help when you observe that sort of thing another touch too is at the bottom edge of the shadow side of the building where it meets the bluish shadow you can see it's a little lighter there because there's some ambient light bouncing off the roadway and sunlight and illuminating having a little more light at the bottom edge of the shadow shape of the building by noticing these little things it's going to enable you to add add that touch of realism to your scenes that's and, and variety and interest for the viewer to really get engaged with your piece so important to do so I just want to spend a couple seconds. Uh, last I looked into, um, again, uh, for even my current subscribers, but if you're new and going to subscribe, when you hit that notification, uh, there should be a spot where you can say to be notified of all new posts. Otherwise, from what I understand from the YouTube algorithm, it's only going to be based on each particular viewer's preference for what they watch and what they'll be presented from my channel, even though you're a subscriber. So if you think, um, uh, sometimes that could probably be misleading into thinking someone's not posting enough when really they are, but you're not uh, being alerted as to every single video. So something to investigate when you hit the notifications. So let's move on to some more painting. I also just want to spend a moment to talk about, I spent just a few seconds at the outro uh, of this video, but... There's so many views of what true plain air is. Some people think it's you got to paint it all 100% in the field. Others, you know, they use this preliminary. I'm more of the latter camp. 
that, you know, it's just, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you might finish them on site and sometimes not. Sometimes you go out there because you want color notes for a larger piece. So it's whatever you want it to be. Don't let, uh, you know, things you, you read and, oh, I'm not a true plain air artist because I don't finish it on site. you got to find your own definition and make it work for you. But going forward here in a few moments, uh, leading back to what I mentioned earlier in the video about the discrepancy in draftsmanship, you can see the overhang probably now in the sunlit side of the building, how it's not explaining itself in the shadow side. There's no overhang in that side of the building. And it's amazing to me how I just totally overlook that. And it's more amusing that the human mind can really just blank out, even when they have some experience doing something. So I'm going to be showing you in just a moment of what I did to correct that. But uh, try to pay a little attention in the future when you're, you're looking at little details of your painting. So here I am. I mixed up some color of the sun, sunlit side and just decided to get in there and repaint the section. And what's careful you'll see me do, which is very important if you do this, um, is to use some of that color, even though you might think you get a perfect match, move that color around other parts of the sunlit side of the building so it seems connected and not like a band of color that is obvious that you corrected something in the painting, if that makes any sense. And uh, of course, I'll be putting some uh, element of a window in here, and you'll see how I choose to do that. See how I move around to get some of that color brought down into another area of the painting so it's integrated. Very important to do. And maybe some YouTube people out there that uh, do painting videos might not have done this video because of the obvious discrepancy but I'm trying to show you the real deal when you're in the studio by yourself no camera so to speak mistakes happen and uh, here's how you would fix it correct it and the important thing is you realize what you did and sometimes it may be so big of a mistake that there's really no way without severe amount of rework to uh, fix it so then you either need to decide if it's important enough image to carry on and redo it or just uh, you know take the hits and realize that well unfortunately even though I spent time on this I'm not going to be able to exhibit this painting but I will learn from it that's the important thing when you get beat down and you have a, a problem and uh, be sure to learn from it so here I am what I've, why I did this part right here was to take out just a bit of the excess paint. So when I put in a suggestive window here, it uh, does not fight too much against uh, very thick light colored paint. And I'll probably do some minor touch ups when this layer is dry to uh, give some little harder edges here and there, but because the paint was wet, and the effect, the final effect I want, won't be achievable in this session. So other than that, and I pick that area, it's kind of offset. You see how it's offset from the red door and the window, two windows on the left. It's a nice compositional, pleasing aspect. So something also to try to look for. Bottom line is you are going to make mistakes in painting, of course, and trying to achieve your goals. The important thing is not get too beat up. Continue forging ahead and learning from your mistakes because that's really all we can do and uh, try to really kind of uh, gather some knowledge. So thanks for joining me. Take care. And don't forget that you can find me on Facebook at Abowski Studio and Instagram at Abowski Studio.